all, welcome to our session, Train Your Jax Models with Model.fit in Keras 3. I'm Monica, Product Manager for the Keras team, and today we'll be giving you an overview of the Keras ecosystem and the many ways it works with Jax. Whether you're just starting your journey into neural networks or a seasoned AI veteran, the Keras ecosystem provides many on-ramps to using Jax. You can use the full spectrum of Keras abstractions with Jax, from a simple model.fit loop for training your first JAX model to more advanced patterns like model parallel distribution. Keras is a comprehensive toolbox for all your deep learning tasks. It provides everything you need to train a JAX model right out of the box. This includes the model.fit training loop, as well as all the tools you need to configure that loop. For example, Keras supports many types of ops and layers. You can use these to build your model with a sequential or functional model building patterns. After that, you'll be able to use the Keras built-in model APIs, such as model.compile to initialize your model, model.fit to train your model, and my personal favorite, model.summary to visualize the layers in your model. Keras also comes with many built-in optimizers, losses, and metrics as well as callbacks to track and modify your model's progress during training. The Keras API also offers you the ability to do distributed training with our multi-device distribution APIs. And of course, all these things work with our training loop abstraction model.fit. Let's take a closer look at the various ways we can use it. The Keras API is designed to follow the principle of the progressive disclosure of complexity which means that we can call model.fit in its simplest form or continuously customize it to enable more complex training loops. Here's an example of a simple model.fit workflow. First, we need to compile the model with an optimizer, a loss function, and a list of metrics we want to measure. Then we call model.fit, passing in our training data, batch size, epochs, and validation data. It's really simple. In the next level of complexity, we can customize the training loop using callbacks. We compile the model like before, but this time when calling model.fit, we pass in the early stopping callback to halt training if the validation loss stops improving. We can drop down to a more advanced level of complexity by enabling multi-device distribution using our keras.distribution APIs. First, we have the device mesh which acts as a grid on top of your available devices. We define the shape of this grid and assign names to each axis. Here, we're creating a two by four grid, naming the axes data and model. Next, we introduce the layout map. This is where we tell Keras how to shard the model's weights across the device mesh. And finally, we set the distribution strategy so that we can train the model according to the sharding configuration we just specified. And lastly, for ultimate control, you can override the core training steps. You can create custom losses and tailor the entire training loop. This example demonstrates overriding the compute loss and updates method, which is then automatically called by model.fit. Our training abstractions are designed for everyone. You can use them for all your experimental, research, and applied machine learning needs. Keras is part of a larger ecosystem. So far, you've seen it working with Jax, but it also works with TensorFlow and PyTorch. You can use the same Keras APIs to train models on any of these backends. This allows you to pick and choose the backend that best suits your need. Choosing your backend is incredibly easy. Just set the Keras backend environmental variable. Here, we set it to Jax, and we can easily switch it to TensorFlow or PyTorch. In a pro tip, your choice of training framework and your choice of data pipeline are independent of one another. You can mix and match them freely. For example, you can use a tf.data pipeline with a Jax backend. Here, we are using a Jax model with model.fit and a TF data pipeline for pre-processing. Finally, the Keras ecosystem extends beyond the core library. Keras also has other domain-specific libraries, such as 
Keras Tuner, Keras Hub, Keras Recommenders, and more. Now let's turn to Divya to tell us all about Keras Hub. Hey everyone, my name is Divya, and today I'm going to talk about Keras Hub, the Keras model garden that comes with a rich collection of pre-trained models and seamless integrations. Keras Hub boasts a remarkable selection, over 211 model variants based on 44 plus state-of-the-art architectures. These include models like Gemma, Llama, Quen, Stable Diffusion, etc. All ready for you to use with JAX, TensorFlow, or PyTorch training frameworks. Whether you're working with text, images, or multimodal data, you'll likely find a model in Keras Hub to get you started. All right, let's dive in. So here's a simple example demonstrating how to load a pre-trained Gemma model directly from Keras Hub. First, you'll need to install Keras Hub using pip install Keras Hub. Then let's set the backend to JAX. Next, we import Keras 3 and Keras Hub. Finally, we load a pre-trained language model called Gemma 2B, specifically its causal language task model directly from preset. We will learn more about presets later. So Keras Hub doesn't just provide models. It also comes with several touch points of integrations with popular platforms like Kaggle and Hugging Face. Here's a look at the Keras Hub model page on Kaggle. You can browse the models, see example code snippets to get you started instantly. Plus, you'll find different model variations to suit your needs. And the best part, each model comes with its own quick start guides and even more guides published by the community. You can also find the preset weights directly on Hugging Face, along with the code you'll need to start working with them. All right, now let's learn about model presets. A preset is a neatly packaged directory containing everything needed to load a pre-trained model, config, checkpoints, and any extra files. And the best part, you can access presets in several ways. You can use a built-in identifier like Gemma2BEN, as shown here. You can also load a model from a Kaggle URL. Note that the model does not have to be from a Keras Kaggle organization. It can be from any user. And same with Hugging Face. Here we are showing one from new research. You can also load a model that you have stored locally. And if you choose to not use a predefined preset, you can always build a custom model with custom configs. Thanks to its Kaggle and Hugging Face integrations, Keras Hub models work with over 200,000 checkpoints. You can use any Hugging Face Transformer checkpoint with model architectures implemented in Keras Hub. Now, let's take a look at a Keras Hub model under the hood and learn more about their underlying structure. In Keras Hub, we have different task models like causal LM, image classifier, and text classifier. Each task model is made up of three key components, a backbone, a preprocessor, and a task head. Now, what does a task do? It takes raw inputs, whether it's an image, audio, or text, and maps them to model predictions. It's important because tasks are highest level entry points into the Keras Hub API. They combine both pre-processing and modeling into one class, making it really easy to use. You can use tasks for either fine tuning or inference. We can break down a task model into two components, a backbone and a preprocessor. A backbone is responsible for taking pre-processed inputs and mapping them into the model's latent space. This part of the model holds the architecture and pre-trained parameters, but it's not tied to any specific task. It can work with different pre-processing or output layers to handle all sorts of machine learning tasks. The second part of, uh, of a task model is a preprocessor, such as the causal LM preprocessor, image classifier preprocessor, or text classifier preprocessor. This takes raw data, whether images, text, or audio, and converts it into a format that the model can understand, like tensors. This pre-processing step is built into high-level task class, but you can also use it standalone if needed. The preprocessor has tools like the tokenizer, audio converter, and image converter. So these components work together to simplify the entire pipeline from raw data to predictions, making it easier to develop and fine-tune deep learning models. A key feature here is that all the components, whether it's the backbone, preprocessor, or even the tokenizer, can be instantiated using the from preset method. This allows you to create custom components with pre-trained weights and configurations. 
Now let's take a look at how you can fine tune these models for your project. So Kerasov models can be fine tuned using the standard model.fit training loops. However, they can also be fine tuned using LoRa and QLoRa techniques. We know that fine tuning large language models can be extremely expensive. One way to make it more efficient is via LoRa or LoRank adaptation. LoRa significantly reduces the number of parameters you need to train. Think of it as training only the essential parts of the model instead of training billions of parameters. LoRa freezes the original model and only trains two smaller matrices. For example, in this picture, I'm using these two matrices of rank two. It's easy to enable LoRa on Keras Hub models. Just call enable LoRa and specify the rank on the backbone of your Keras Hub model. Fine tune the model using compile and fit. But what if you're still limited by GPU memory or want to run your model on smaller devices? That's where QLoRa comes in. QLoRa or quantized LoRa takes LoRa and adds another layer of optimization, that is quantization. It converts the model data into smaller, more efficient formats. First, we quantize the weights. Next, we enable LoRa in the exact same way we did before. And then we compile and fit the model as usual. Now that you have trained your model, you can actually upload your weights to Kaggle and Hugging Face. Yep, just save the model to your own preset directory, and then you can use Keras Hub .upload preset to upload that preset to a Kaggle URL or a Hugging Face URL as well. Awesome. Thanks, Divya, for teaching us all about Keras Hub. And now, let's talk about Keras recommenders. In today's world, recommender systems are essential for delivering personalized experiences. However, Creating models that are both accurate and performant presents significant technical challenges. That's why we're excited to introduce Keras Recommenders, a new library that puts state-of-the-art recommendation techniques at your fingertips. To talk about this, let me welcome Fabian. Hi, my name is Fabian, and I'm a software engineer on the Keras team. Today, we're going to show you how you can build a JAX-based recommender system in minutes with Keras recommenders. Let's first go over some APIs we have as building blocks for recommender models. When building recommendation systems, scale is key. We're dealing with millions of items and the need for rapid results. That's why recommendation systems often employ a two-phase approach. The retrieval phase efficiently filters the vast item pool identifying a manageable set of candidates. This is followed by the ranking phase, which uses a more intensive scoring method to carefully select and order the most relevant items for the user. We also have multitask models, which can combine retrieval and ranking tasks together, as well as multiple data sources. As a result, they can often outperform single task models thanks to transfer learning. With Keras Recommenders, you can train all these models with the model.fit API that you already know from Keras. Keras Recommenders provides specialized layers, losses, and metrics designed specifically for training high-quality recommender models. This includes everything from feature interaction layers and retrieval layers to pairwise and listwise losses along with a diverse set of top K metrics for candidate ranking. And because Keras RS is built on Keras 3, these components are backend agnostic, supporting JAX, TensorFlow, and Torch. One of the best things about Keras is the wealth of guides we have. And with Keras RS, we're adding to that. We have a wide selection of pedagogical starter examples to introduce the key concept of recommender models. We also provide code for standard architectures, which you can use as templates to get you started on your project. Great. Now let's take a look at Keras Recommenders in action. We'll walk you through a practical example of building a sequential recommender model known as GRU for Rec. Unlike traditional methods like matrix factorization, sequential recommenders leverage a user's past interactions to make better predictions. Imagine recommending TV episodes. Knowing which episodes a user has already watched allows the model to intelligently suggest the next logical episode. 
Here is how we might structure the code in a model subclass. This model is going to use a two-tower architecture. We have a query tower representing the user. Critically, we we'll use a gated recurrent unit, or GRU, within this query tower to process the user sequence of past items. The second tower is the candidate tower for the items. In this example, we use a simple embedding layer. We'll also need a retrieval layer to perform the actual recommendations and a loss function to measure the quality of our predictions. In the call method, we'll feed the user query through the query tower and retrieve the recommendations. To train our retrieval model, we'll use the affinity score between the output of the query tower and the candidate tower. This will tell us how well they match. To do this, we'll override the compute loss method. The output of the query tower is available through ypred, which comes from the call method we created earlier. We also calculate the output of the candidate tower. We then compute the affinity scores by multiplying these two outputs. Our goal is to get these affinity scores as close as possible to a diagonal matrix, representing perfect matches. The categorical cross-entropy loss is used to quantify how far we are from that perfect match. With the model defined and the loss function in place, we can now easily train it using model.fit with our dataset of user item interactions. If you're already using Keras, you know how its intuitive high-level APIs make it easy to experiment with different model architectures. That same ease of experimentation extends to Keras recommenders. For example, we can easily change from a basic embedding model to a more powerful sequential model simply by adding a GRU layer to the query tower. Embeddings are crucial in recommender systems, but they can quickly become unwieldy when dealing with billions of candidates. The size of these embedding tables often exceeds the memory of a single processing unit. To address this, Google's TPUs are equipped with specialized sparse core processors, optimized for handling large embedding models. Keras Recommender's distributed embedding layer makes it easy to take advantage of this hardware. It automatically shards the embedding tables across TPUs and sparse core processors. Distributed embedding comes with a number of behind the scene optimizations that you, as a developer, don't have to think about. And it is available in Keras RS for both the JAX and TensorFlow backends. Recommender models often rely on multiple, sometimes numerous, embedding tables. To maximize performance, the distributed embedding layer performs all embedding lookups in a single pass. To enable this, you need to configure your embedding tables. With this configuration, you specify the dimensionality of each embedding table, as well as the combiner function, which defines how to reduce embeddings obtained from looking up a sequence of items. Next, you configure features and connect them with the embedding tables. It's important to note that a single embedding table can be shared by multiple features. Then you simply instantiate the distributed embedding layer with the configuration and then invoke it within your model. Remember, looking up embeddings is the first step in your recommender model. Please visit keras.io for more information about Keras, Keras Hub, and Keras Recommenders. All right, we hope that was a good walkthrough of the Keras ecosystem's collection of tools that simplify the process of building and customizing machine learning models. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait for you to model.fit your JAX models.